Lisa's favorite segment. I don't know, maybe is it your favorite segment? I'm going to say it's your favorite segment. We're going to talk about Elisa likes to cook and make food. We're going to talk about the food that Elisa has cooked over the last, I don't know, week or so. I have been cooking. And yeah. and listener Jane asked me why I you know we should have a, a section a segment with um with recipes. And I'm like, "Well, we do." But then I thought, "Well, wait a second. I haven't really been cooking much, so there hasn't been a lot to talk about. And you can't really give out recipes no. on the podcast because most of the recipes you use are from books that are for sale, and that would not be good. Unless you have your own recipes, those you can give out on the, on the show. And I was thinking that, like, you, you've you asked me before what which one of the Nom Nom Paleo, because I pretty much cook, I make almost everything from Nom Nom Paleo. Mm-hmm. So which one of the two cookbooks would I recommend if you could only pick one I would say ready or not because pretty much everything from the red cookbook um is available on her website a oh, lot really? of the recipes in a lot of the recipes in ready or not are also available on the website but there's like 150 here I don't know oh that one has a hundred over a hundred according to the, over the cover 100 plus yeah, 100, but that's amazing I use this one a lot more well, I use this one a lot more because the recipes are new to me, I guess. But a lot of the other ones in the other one have made it to the website or they're on her. Her app is really good, too. If you have an iPad or an iPhone, her um, the <laughs> Nom Nom Paleo app is really good. Hmm. So, um, so one of the things I made this week. Uh, so Monday, where are they at? Uh, I don't know where it's at, Mike. Oh, it's a Tex-Mex beef and rice casserole. Um, so it has some rice cauliflower and some beef and onion and bell peppers and garlic and salsa and stuff like that in it. Um, and then you whisk in eggs at the end. So you cook up all the stuff and then whisk in eggs at the end. And I, we had, because I was going to make a chorizo meatloaf from, I think we talked about that, that yeah. I was going to make that chorizo meatlo- meatloaf. Well, it was just going to end up taking too much time and baking and everything. And I thought this looked really good. So I made this and it was really good. So I used the chorizo instead of using, I fried up the pound of ground beef and then the chorizo. did like a half and half or something. Did half and half. And this is really good. So I actually froze. um, What does she say here? Extras can be refrigerated for up to four days or frozen for up to four months. So. We popped it in the freezer on Monday, and yep. you pulled it out today. Which We're we can do because there's so the much room in the freezer yeah. now. Well, man, yeah, so much. But it was easy to put it in there, that's for sure. Yep. Since we cleaned out last, what, two weeks ago? Two weeks ago. Yep. So, yeah, so we're, that's what we're going to have. We're having this for leftovers tonight, and that was really, really good. Yeah, top with a bunch of cilantro and... Yeah. Um, but that one was... Really, so that's, that's from... Uh, that one's from Ready or Not. Um, the other thing that I made... So... I think that was Tuesday. Wednesday mornings, I try and make a bunch of stuff because it's just like I have a bunch of time. Well, I th- always think I have more time than I really you have do. More time on Wednesday than you do on Tuesday. And then it's like ten after eleven, and I'm still in my PJs and running yeah. around the kitchen making stuff, and I'm waiting for soup to cool. And this um, is all because the store does not open until noon on yes. Wednesdays, whereas otherwise it no- opens at ten. Yes. So you've got a little couple extra hours there in the morning. Which feels like a couple hours should be a lot, but like you said, by the time oh no, it goes fast. All of a sudden, whoa! I gotta get going. Yep, Rollo needs some love, and he has to go outside, More and he has to have treats and all that. So, um, so I got a bunch of Napa cabbage over the weekend at the grocery store, and um, carrots and some sweet peppers and stuff. So I made basically I got everything to make a big batch of kimchi, and. That is also a recipe that is in Michelle's new cookbook in her basics. I really like how the book is laid out because the there's a section with like the kind of, I don't know what it's called. It is called Get Set. So it's like the stuff you need to cook anytime. So it's like sauces. Is there um, a ready and a go section? No. Or a um, cook section, ready, get set, cook? Well, there's ready. There's kind of ready. Oh, they're out of order, though. What do you mean? It gets set as before ready. Yeah, because you're... you're it's, it's supposed to be ready, is, get set, it, go. It's in the right order for this book. Uh, she's got it all mixed up. So, I'll have to give her a call and say, hey, Michelle, what are you doing? So she has a recipe in here for her own uh, kimchi, and it's really good. I actually bought some of the 
Oh, what is it? What is it? Oh, I can't say this word. Is it a swear? No. Just do that if it is. Gotcha, Garu? I think that's it. Sure. Gotcha, Garu? That works for me. Also known as Korean chili flakes. Um, I highly recommend recommend actually getting that instead of using like, because I think before I've used crushed red pepper to make kimchi. Yeah, that sounds... And uh, this is, yeah, really, really good. So What's the difference? What are those? These are Korean chili flakes. Well, but how is that different from a crushed red pepper? What does it it's taste like? It's like it's a more powdery thing. I don't know. I don't eat them because they're... They're both very spicy. This one, like, oh. burns your nose. And... I don't know what. doesn't sound good. Rollo's having a foot fight behind us if you can hear that because I'm sure everybody in the world can hear that now. He's... <laughs> he, it's a thing he does. Don't We can't figure out why it is. His foot decides it wants to kick him in the face. Luckily, the people that are watching the video version of this got a nice look at that. <laughs> <laughs> it's really awesome when he so, does it in the morning when you're trying to sleep. Yeah. Oh, that guy. Anyway, oh, we're talking about kimchi. No, kind of. Yeah, he yeah. Said exactly. So I'm sorry. When... Well, and I asked you what, what I made at this time. If you like it better, if you like the homemade better than the store bought. Mm -hmm. And you, you said yes. Mm -hmm. I like. Yeah, for sure. I like making it homemade because I put red pep sweet red peppers in there, and um, yeah, you can do whatever you want with it. I put a lot of carrots in there because I really like the carrots in there. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so I made a ginormous batch of this. And so while this was going, I made, and this recipe is available on uh, Michelle's website. It's the um, pork and Napa cabbage soup. It is really, really good. So you bought all the Napa cabbage. I basically from the bought all, yeah, well, yeah, it's Beaver Dam. There isn't a whole lot. The the like eight pounds I bought was probably all that was available here. Which is why the the cashier is so impressed and, and fascinated when you buy things, especially the Napa cabbage. So, yeah, the the cute little girl at the grocery store. What do you think? Do you think she's in high school or just? I don't know. I think how old I feel like she she's is. older than she's high school. Probably, yeah, she's probably. But late. every time you go through her lane, she always, always comments on everything. Every item. and it's like I feel so good about like all of like the awesome food that I'm buying. Yeah, it's the thing. It makes it take like five times longer than it should, but you also feel really good because she's like, oh wow, the, you know, Napa cabbage. This is a like... big one. <laughs> and, uh, she's always just amazing. Like every time, like and everybody. It's not just like you or I. Like everybody that goes through the line, she's just continuously fascinated by the food. <laughs> That they're buying it's incredible <laughs> you know it's, it's a great like, experience it it's always cute like the cashiers because we, we've been going to the same grocery store since we moved here and like a lot of years ago like almost 15 it would be 15 years ago 14 yeah. years ago and uh you know it's it's always so cute because some they sometimes they get like some people times there are people up there the cashiers they just don't really care and other times yeah. they are like i love food <laughs> 